been back. Let's take a call from Henry in Redwood City now. Good evening, Henry. Uh, this is Pierre. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, while we're on the topic of airplanes, um, let's say I'm a passenger on an inter international flight uh, taking off from country A, flying over country B, landing in country C. Maybe the airline's owned by country D. And uh, I'm involved in a crime on the airplane, maybe either as a perpetrator or, or as a victim. Um, which country's laws are going to apply to that situation? Well, that's a, I guess what they say in law school is a choice of law problem, so I'll turn to our attorney guest. But I, I, it seems anymore it's almost the country that gets its hands on you is the one that's liable to deal with you. Well, we just, I just came back from an international conference of travel attorneys, and that was one of the issues. What's happening now, like the United States, has a long-arm statute that's trying to get these terrorists. So if the country involved can show some kind of reaction, some kind of relationship to it, it can try to claim jurisdiction. But unfortunately, the situation is most of the countries try to pass the ball into the other court. They don't want it. And then sometimes the they, they, they don't particularly want to give certain people up in, in certain of the extradition mm -hmm. problems right. also. Let's talk now with Henry in Daly City, now that I have that straightened out. Welcome yeah. to Legal Currents, Henry. So thank you. What about an uh, American citizen for 30 years who, were, who was born in a friendly country which has a dual citizen, citizenship law? And after 30 years, when he go to visit there, they demand from him to go out with their own passport which means they don't recognize the American passport. He cannot give up his citizenship. Okay, so How would the American react to it? Would they let the other country to have the way, or they will demand that he will use his American passport? Okay, dual citizenship, a concept that I guess a lot of people may not be familiar with, but the United States does not recognize dual citizenship. Is that correct? Well, no, the United States will allow you to have the dual citizenship. It's not going to interfere with Mexico, with Israel, with other countries that have their rights when you enter their countries. At one time, like I said, they wouldn't allow you to keep your citizenship if you did certain acts. Now they recognize it and the other country who has you physically can put an extra tax on you when you leave or in many of the cases the children might be asked to serve in the service or they may still have a military obligation so so if you if you have the citizenship ties to that other country does it just boil down to a when in rome do as the romans do <laughs> I, I would <laughs> agree with that yeah. okay so you you have to pay attention to wherever you are if you have That's that fair. kind of obligation what other kind of services are available through the citizen emergency centers we were talking about and i want to put that phone number back on the screen again our consular officers abroad in the American Citizen Services sections assist the Americans who are arrested, have medical emergencies, uh, certain situations come up where people are uh, lost and the family and friends back home can't find them so there's assistance in this area. Uh, many actions like this where they just are out there, they lose their money, they lose their identity documents and they're wandering around trying to figure out what to do, go to the embassy, ask for help, and uh, help will be given. And if you're in this country and perhaps you, you think that somebody is in some other country and is in difficulty and whatever, can you call this, uh, this number? Call the number, the explain the situation to the friendly voice on the other end and help will be on the way.